The purpose of festivals is to provide a relaxing night out for families, away from the stresses of everyday life. It's difficult to picture them as places where murder can take place. Nonetheless, on July 25, 1998, that is exactly what took place there. Hello, and welcome to another video. Today, we will be sharing a terrifying account of a seemingly innocent woman who poisoned the food that was served to more than a hundred guests. Before we go on, as always, we would appreciate it if you would give this video a like, subscribe, and ensure that the notification bell is turned on for more in-depth real crime sagas like this. Let's jump right in. Masumi Hayashi was a resident of the Sanobi district in the Japanese district of Wakamaya. Born on July 22, 1961, Masumi had her whole life in Wakamaya since childhood. Even before the festival, she had a number of questionable run-ins with the law, including one that she did in February of 1997 when she poisoned her husband's food with arsenic and served it to him. Clearly, Masumi had a lot of practice abusing poison for her own narcissistic purposes. A strange relationship existed between Masumi and her husband Kenji, as the two of them participated in criminal activities together. Both parties were successful in committing an insurance fraud scheme from October 1993 to the end of 1997, during which they intentionally injured themselves and stole around 150 million yen. The pair was obviously greedy, inventive, and not hesitant to go the additional mile for money, as their selfishness knew no bounds. When Masumi carried out the curry poisoning of the whole community in July of 1998, Kenji had been sentenced to prison and was serving his time. Many people believed that Masumi's motivation was resentment towards her neighbors, who shunned her because her husband had been sentenced. The year 1998 saw a nationwide celebration of the Summer Festival in Japan. The people who lived in Sanobi were looking forward to getting together on that particular day. No one could have foreseen that it would soon be the setting of an unimaginable catastrophe ever witnessed in that summer. A communal pot of curry would be prepared by all of the residents and then it would be given out for free to each of the people who attended the celebration, in keeping with the culture of the community to rejoice together. Everyone devoured the delicious curry, completely unaware of the fact that it had been laced with at least 1,000 grams of arsenic. This quantity was so large that it was sufficient to put an end to everyone at the festival. The curry was consumed by children, women, and men, all of whom were ignorant of the price that it would exact on them and the town later that day. On July 25th, as a result of eating the stew, two children and two adults passed away from their illnesses, while 63 others were hospitalized with acute arsenic poisoning. They experienced the most excruciating headaches imaginable, along with persistent vomiting and skin and muscular outbreaks. It was obvious that this poisoning would have a major effect on them for the rest of their lives. Both the president and vice president of the Wakayama City Council died from the attack, Takatoshi Taninaka, 64, and Takaki Tanaka, 53, were the ages of the community leaders who died from the poison. Both had spent their careers serving the community in an honorable way. They had no idea that the unexpected poisoning would be the price that would be exacted for all of their hard work on the festival. They had no idea that this day of celebration would be their last. The deaths of the two children, Hirotaka Hayashi, who was 10 years old, and Miyuki Tori, who was 16 years old, were particularly heartbreaking. Their lives had only recently begun when they were tragically cut short in the beginning stages. The entire town of Wakayashi was left in ruins and in a state of mourning. They were determined to get to the bottom of it as quickly as possible. Masumi was quickly identified as a person of interest by the authorities. After all, her husband worked in the pest control industry, so she had unrestricted access to arsenic. 
There were also rumors that she had poisoned a random lodger, and her husband was already in jail for another crime committed. Before now, Masumi had previously been tried in three other cases connected to arsenic poisoning that were similar to this one. It should not come as a surprise that everyone suspected her as the culprit. Although making generalizations about people might be counterproductive, Masumi's case was different due to her previous wicked deeds. As soon as the police began their investigation, they quickly discovered that the arsenic in the curry was the exact same kind that Masumi had at her home. It was very clear that the evidence was circumstantial, but was it sufficient to convince everyone? The police were not aware of any possible motive that Masumi might have had at this time. Why would someone want to kill around a hundred other people in such a careless manner? Was Masumi deep down truly this cold-hearted? Many people believed that the reason Masumi could have been the culprit resided in the fact that she was avoided by the other people in the neighborhood. Masumi was finding that the neighborhood was becoming more unfriendly on a daily basis as more people refused to associate with her. It's possible that this was her way of exacting heavenly vengeance on the town. In spite of the fact that these were all simply speculative, the final verdict ultimately rested with the court. Throughout the course of the trial, Masumi maintained her alibi of innocence, but no one believed her. Judge Ikuo Ogawa, who was presiding over the case, stressed the monstrous nature of the act, as well as the devastation that it had wreaked on the neighborhood. He said it was a crime that was committed with no regard for human life. The defendant had deeply rooted impulses towards criminal behavior. She was well aware that even a small amount of arsenic was sufficient to cause death, but nevertheless, she used it in the curry. The judge had enough perception to come to the conclusion that there was no true motive in the case, which was something that could always be argued about. On the other hand, he was keen to point out that there was sufficient circumstantial evidence to establish with certainty that Masumi was the one who had committed the crime. After all, Masumi had been responsible for poisoning a large number of individuals in the past and had little regard for the legal system. She had also mastered the art of poisoning to the point where she was aware of the precise quantity that should be added to the stew. What a psychopath. In addition, Masumi stood guard over the pot by herself for around 40 minutes. This would have given her the time to put her strategy into action without much difficulty. The highly publicized trial was finally over when Masumi was finally found guilty and sentenced to death in 2002. The relatives of those who were killed could finally get some peace of mind thanks to this judgment. At long last, Masumi was being made to suffer the consequences of her actions. Despite this, the court case was not resolved at this point. Masumi had submitted yet another petition in an effort to overturn the death sentence. Due to the fact that the evidence was entirely circumstantial, she did have some wiggle room. However, her appeal was turned down in both 2005 and 2009. The severity of the crime was viewed by the high court as being too great for it to be reasonable to grant Masumi the benefit of the doubt. She has not been released from prison to this day. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that each year in the United States, foodborne illnesses make 48 million people sick, send 128,000 to the hospital, and kill 3,000. Arsenic in drinking water or food over a long period of time can cause cancer and sores on the skin. It has also been linked to heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Exposure to arsenic in early childhood has been linked to problems with brain development and more deaths in young adults. With the scale of the people Masumi poisoned, it's safe to say that the death penalty is worth the crime, because if those number of people were not properly treated and died, it would have been a genocide. Do you think that Masumi was framed because of her past poisonous scheme? Or was she lying through it all to maintain her innocence? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching, 
and we'll see you at the next one.